In Pakistan, Islamic fundamentalists are now the real rulers. They can control the state machinery from the streets. The recent violent protests by proscribed Tehreek el Pakistan exposed once again the grave danger that radical Islamist movements pose to Pakistan. Extremists belonging to various jihadi outfits are now lawmakers in the country and by accepting all their demands, the government is just giving strength to these hardliners. A report. Tehreek el Pakistan and Islamist party banned recently under the Anti-Terrorism Act staged countrywide protests demanding the expulsion of the French ambassador over a cartoon of Prophet Muhammad published in France. Consequently, week-long violent protests forced the Imran Khan government to announce that a resolution will be introduced in the National Assembly on the expulsion of the French ambassador to Pakistan. Moreover, TLP chief Saad Rizvi, who was arrested on April 12, was also released. Surprisingly, such decisions came just after declaring Tehreek el as a terror outfit and banning its activities across the country. It is the latest in a long series of surrenders to the Tehreek el Pakistan group and its radical agenda. Pakistan and Tehreek el طویل مذاکرات کے بعد یہ بات طے پا گئی ہے کہ ہم آج قومی اسمبلی میں فرانسیسی سفیر کی ملک بدری کی قرارداد پیش کریں گے اور طریق لبیک سارے ملک سے جس میں کہ خاص طور پر مسجد رحمت اللہ العالمین سے بھی دھرنے کو ختم کیا جائے گا اور بات چیت اور مذاکرات کا سلسلہ آگے بڑھایا جائے گا اور جن لوگوں کے خلاف مقدمات درج ہیں سمیت فورتھ شیڈیول کے ان کا بھی اخراج کیا جائے گا اٹ سیمز دیٹ ان پاکستان ریلیجس ہارڈ لائنرس کین میک لا میکرز آلٹر لاز اکارڈنگ ٹو دیئر انٹرپریٹیشن آف شریا دے ہیو پروون دیٹ دے ڈو ناٹ نیڈ الیکٹرل سکسیز ان پاکستان اینڈ دے ڈونٹ نیڈ ٹو سیٹ ان پارلیمنٹ ٹو میک لاز اینڈ گورن دا کنٹری These Islamists are strategic assets that the military establishment uses to keep the civilian government under pressure. Moreover, the civilian government in Pakistan is also engaged in a cycle of appeasement politics. Prime Minister Imran Khan as opposition leader had tangled frequently with various hardline religious outfits including Tehreek el Pakistan. He presented himself to the electorate as a devout Muslim ready to come to the defense of Islam. Now these same radical groups have come to haunt him. If you look at the state of internal turmoil in Pakistan, it is quite evident that terrorist is a snake and terrorism is a venom and the snake can bite the sponsor anytime. Pakistan started off with radicalization, with Ziaul Haq, starting off with Islamization and President Musharraf calling them as strategic assets, trying to use it against various neighbors, including India, as proxies. They have used terrorists to their advantage, not realizing that when they become strong, obviously they will start dictating terms. Having pandered to the religious groups in the past, Pakistan is now paying the price for encouraging these fringe elements. The government is fearful of chaos on the streets and the street power of the mullah. It is a frightening situation in Pakistan, not only for religious minorities, but also for the majority Muslims. Pakistan has entered an era in which religious hardliners have more power to dictate their decisions from what is Islamic to what is not, and who is an infidel a blasphemer, a sinner, and a Western agent. Pakistan Islamists have demonstrated that they are the state now. The Islamist victory is Pakistan's defeat.